Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to look at some viral snake TikToks. I'm going to break them down in the most educational manner I possibly can, but as always, I'm really hoping you'll join me in the comments. Let's dive in. All right, so I'm at this beautiful spring right here. Um, let's flip this around. And I just found this little baby cottonmouth, and we're going to swim with him in the spring. I got to be kind of careful because he is venomous. Look at him. Hey, little buddy. Oh, he's going to go right past me. Wow, this is so cool. Oh, he's so pretty. And we let him swim back over to the bank. So cool. Hmm. Not the usual response I see to cotton mouths. Maybe if we had more people like him, the snakes wouldn't get such a bad reputation. So over here, I'm turning my back to a black mamba. We Maybe I need to pull a Billy Madison and go back to school because I think we have different definitions of the word safe. Let me tell you something. Meet the Black Mamba. This thing is basically a living delete button. I mean, they're considered to be the most dangerous noodle in Africa for a reason. First off, they have a 100% fatality rate if the bite goes untreated. And it only takes two drops of venom entering your bloodstream to make that happen in 30 minutes. Here's the problem with that. They bite really fast, as in faster than you could blink. They bite more than once. They've been recorded striking up to 12 times in a matter of seconds. And just one of those bites can unload up to 40 drops of venom into your blood. It takes two drops. That's 20 times the lethal dose. As with all of his videos, there was a massive glaring error in the middle that I'm sure some people will be able to point out for me. Also, I'm not really sure if you can call it the most dangerous snake in Africa. I guess it depends on how you think about things, as in terms of how bad the bite is versus how many bites are given. I mean, definitely the puff adder bites more people than the black mamba. If you were ever to be bitten by a coastal taipan, it is a 100% death sentence unless you receive anti-venom treatment. Oh, look at that snake! And you can see that initial huge yield. How much time would you estimate you have if you're bitten by one of these snakes? If you were to get bitten by one and do first aid straight away, it'd be hours usually before you had any symptoms because that's how effective those bandages are. But without a bandage, I reckon you're looking at about half an hour, you'd be vomiting blood, you'd be passing out, you'd be, you'd be in a very bad way. The coastal taipan is a really cool snake because you see all kinds of venomous snakes with like banding and red and black and yellow coloration and these distinct aposematic warning colors. But the coastal taipan just has this kind of light coloration on its face and somehow it looks more scary to me than the really brightly colored ones have a look at this look at the size of the snake i knew this species was big but to be honest i didn't i could never have imagined that it would be like this big irl sometimes hard to tell on photos how large snakes are till you've got them in front of you but have a look at this let me stretch it out here look at the size of this viper let me stand up so we don't have this annoying railing that has got to be at least, what, 1.2, 1.3 meters? Something like that. And unlike a lot of other vipers, look at this thing it does. They puff up, fill themselves with air, kind of like a Bouyga cynodon or something would, which is something I've honestly never seen in a viper. It's even like opening and gaping its mouth a little. But wow. On photos, they seem so similar to the Sumatran pit viper, but now having it in person, it's like a completely completely different animal. So that was David's feed. That's a YouTube channel that so many people have told me to comment on it that I have done as you have asked. And honestly, after having a look, I can say that his handling is insane. Um, that was a Malcolm's Pit Viper, which is a, a species in the Trimerosaurus genus. So it's going to be quite docile. But all the same, I don't think anyone's ever been bitten by one. And obviously being that big, it's going to do something if it bites you. So overall, Yes, his handling is insane, but I've got to say at this point that his knowledge is insane too. That was a huge red-bellied black snake, and I think that was kind of a cool clip. He was doing really well, he was going to get away from them at first, but when he hit the tarmac, you know, he just couldn't make any good progress on there. It's so amazing to see that this snake, it looks pretty impressive. I mean, if you weren't a snake person, it would look pretty scary. It's highly venomous, and it just doesn't actually want to have any trouble. All it tries to do is get away. Obviously, they were snake catchers, so they didn't want to harm it, but the snake doesn't know that. And even so, its, it's main 
go-to thing is to try and get away rather than to attack. It uses... That was the late, great Dingo Dinkleman. Honestly, I don't know, but I'm starting to wonder if he ever did rugby because he can move seriously fast for a man his size. That was a Black Mamba, of course. He had it by the tail at first, and Black Mambas, I'm always saying that they're not aggressive, and it's true, they will avoid conflict if they can, but also they, they do know how powerful their venom is. So if you have one by the tail, it's perfectly capable of changing its mind and saying, you know what, I'm not enjoying this anymore, I'm gonna make you move out the way. So this is one of those clips that supposedly shows, you know, a, a vicious, horrible snake attacking an inanimate object, you know, a tomato in this case. And when you look closely at the clip, you see something a little bit suspicious. This is the kind of clip that annoys me. There's going to be another one later, actually. But you see part of the way through the snake rolls over. Typically, that's something a snake does when it's pinned or grabbed by something. It rolls to try and free itself. So the most likely scenario here is that this, I think it's a source scaled viper, is being pinned and hurt by something off camera and it's being made to look you know vicious when actually it's it's probably in considerable pain the king brown's venom may not be as potent as the taipans but what it lacks in quality it makes up for in quantity Injecting up to six times more venom in a single bite. The largest venom yield ever recorded. This ten-foot rat snake is unaware it's being watched. It needs all the venom, power and size it can muster. Bad for the rat snake and bad for us. 16 millimeter fangs, like hypodermic needles, inject 20 times more venom than most venomous snakes in a single bite. So dramatic. <laughs> there we saw a mulga snake and a king cobra both hunting and eating other snakes. And this is kind of interesting actually because Ophiophagy, or the practice of eating other snakes, has some distinct advantages and disadvantages. So, on the advantage side, we've got the fact that a snake is full of protein, it's mostly muscle, it's packaged nicely to fit into the other snake's mouth, so it's like almost a perfect meal for a snake. Another advantage is that if that snake eats other snakes, it's not competing with those other snakes for food, which is kind of an interesting one to think about. Imagine if king cobras also preyed on the same thing as rat snakes and reticulated pythons, that would be just competition. Well, so just cut the competition out and eat it, which I think is pretty cool. On the downside, there's a couple disadvantages, the main one being that if you're a snake and you eat snakes, you're more likely to ingest parasites that parasitize snakes. That's pretty logical, but we think that king cobras in particular have a better immune system to deal with this, and it certainly doesn't seem to harm them massively in the long run. Another disadvantage is that the snakes that eat snakes need a good population of snakes to eat. You know, a snake eating snake probably wouldn't do very well here in England because we, we haven't got a lot and we haven't got a good variety of species. You don't want to depend on one species to eat and that species go into decline and then you're, you're in trouble basically. So overall, it's a really good way of life for a snake, even if there are some of these minor disadvantages. Got an inland type in? Yes, Mark! How good! Inland type in. The world's most venomous snake. First of all, using a drone is genius for that kind of thing. But second of all, I just wanted to show that clip to show the kind of habitat that inland taipans live in. Because a few people now have asked me, why are inland taipans and, and some of their relatives so highly venomous? And well, if you look at that landscape, it's so dry, it's so bleak. 
It's so barren. If you want to live there and you want to hunt prey, and you're a venomous snake, your venom must act extremely quickly and extremely well. You can't afford to miss a meal because you don't know when the next one might be. That's another one of the clips that annoys me, because I see these all the time on Instagram especially. You know, you've got a cobra, it's backed in the corner, and there's two mongooses, mongies, I don't really know what you're supposed to say, that are attacking it and they're coming in, you know, and it just smells of being set up to me. And if it is set up, then that also smells of cruelty. The creation of anti-venom is a long, drawn-out process. The way it's still made for the most part, is by taking the venom of an animal, injecting it into a horse or a sheep, taking the antibodies from that horse or sheep, synthesizing it, cleaning it up, and eventually injecting it into you. Depending on the venom, this process could take upwards of 18 months. The World Health Organization has stringent regulations on who can produce anti-venom, and each country may have their own regulations. And depending on the species of snake, you may not just need one vial, you might need upwards of 20. Really, overall, that's a pretty good explanation of why they don't make anti-venom for eastern coral snakes anymore in the US. It's a snake that rarely bites, and the costs are considered to outweigh the benefits. The adder is one of Britain's three native snake species. While it's distributed throughout the island, within heathland, moors, and woodland edges, its camouflage and elusive nature mean it often goes unnoticed. They're perhaps most infamous for being the only venomous snake found anywhere in Britain. While bites are potentially serious, adders are extremely unlikely to bite people or dogs unless they're disturbed or deliberately antagonised, and even then, this is very rarely fatal. Adders are an interesting species, that's our only venomous snake here in the UK. We like to exaggerate how dangerous they are, of course, they're not particularly dangerous. They've got a strong venom, but they've only got a little bit. So you're very unlikely to pass away from a bite. Years ago, I went surveying them in an area that was keeping track of them for conservation, basically. And I came pretty close to stepping on one, I have to admit, because they just, sometimes they get out of there before you even see them. Other times they just sliver very slowly. And I was kind of putting my foot down to step down and noticed it slivering away under it. So they're a very shy, quiet snake that will just do whatever it thinks is best at the moment to avoid detection. This is a baby Saharan sand viper or land flounder, and it's quite possibly the cutest venomous snake on the planet. These cute little guys are known for burying themselves underneath the surface of the sand, or in this case, sprinkles. Isn't that crazy? They're also sidewinders, meaning they'll move their body side to side, maintaining as little contact with the hot desert sand as possible. Sometimes they also get these little hats. The adult land flounders aren't quite as cute or sneaky as the baby. I love the name land flounder. I think that's amazing. And I also love the fact that they've evolved to use a sidewinding locomotion which is exactly the same as the Sidewider in the US does, even though they're on the other side of the planet. That's pretty amazing. First thing to keep in mind after a snake bite is to remain calm. Panicking can increase blood flow and heart rate, which will accelerate the absorption of venom. To prevent swelling, take off any clothing that might enclose the bite area. Keep the bitten extremity elevated above heart level. In order to prevent the venom from spreading further, you must also keep the affected extremity very still. Clean the bite area with water to remove any debris that has become lodged in the wound. Be careful not to get any of the venom that is near the bite into any open wounds. Call 911 immediately after. Monitor your breathing and heart rate as you wait for medical attention. No video about snake bite care should ever be that long. It should be really, really simple. If you are anywhere in the world, you just take off any rings, jewelry, and you call the emergency services straight away. Forget all the rest. Don't worry about it. Just get stuff off that could get stuck, like your wedding ring, for example, and call the emergency services. The only caveat I would say is that if you are in Australia, you have a good chance of meeting someone who has a pressure bandage. So if you are in Australia, grab an Aussie as quickly as you can. Anyway, I hope that was enjoyable. Hope it was interesting. And as always, I'm hoping you're going to come back next week for another one. Thank you very much.